Hello, and welcome to another Wednesday Musings from the Spirit of New Earth. Today I'd like to share um, some miracles that have happened in my life, in my seven decades upon the planet. So I think the first miracle was that I was born seven weeks early without any birthing trauma. So I could have been born a Leo, but I was born a Cancer. In my early childhood, I experienced, um, I, I could say, my share of trauma from um, being diagnosed with scurvy and polio in my back and getting hit by a car when I was seven by a real car with a real metal bumper in which I could have died. Obviously, I wanted a shock. But amazingly, they did not operate on my broken leg and arm. They just put my arm and leg in a cast. Now, how I survived those things at an early age, I have no idea. But I know I was guided, guide, supremely guided and protected by my angelic uh, supporters. Yeah, scurvy, I think, because I didn't have enough vitamin C. Polio, I have no idea why I got that, how I got it. Doctor said, well, if you get it again, you're either going to die or be paralyzed from life. And I remember as a five-year-old thinking, no, that's not going to happen. I remember I didn't accept that. And uh, the car accident at age seven, well, I thought about leaving. But then I thought, well, I'd have to come back again and recreate this whole thing with my um, family. And I don't want to do that. So I'll stick around. So um, I was lucky I had very good doctors at uh, Herrick Memorial Hospital in Berkeley, California. And another miracle was I could have died at age 20 when I started a fight and ended up getting a concussion uh, from a blow with a tire iron to the front of my head. And luckily I was picked up wandering around on a busy street in downtown Richmond dazed and of course totally out of it and he rushed me to the hospital i was in great pain <laughs> doctor said uh you're okay sent me home and i for that whole night i felt like dying i really was so in pain that man i didn't know if i was going to come or go took myself to the va hospital in san francisco and was there for about 10 days in intensive care and extreme pain in my neck and the doctors had thought about doing brain surgery, but then I thought telepathically, no, no, you're not gonna operate on my brain and I'm not gonna tell you that I am swallowing blood for like a week. Uh, I recovered with no side effects, but that was another miracle of being saved again. Later on, <clears throat> had a house fire my dad and I were totally sleeping uh, asleep in his home in El Cerrito, California, and um, got woken up by an archangel saying, I think you better get up to see if the house is on fire. And uh, I tried to go back to sleep to dismiss that thought, although I started smelling burnt wires, and I thought, well, maybe I should get up. No reason for the house to catch on fire, but it did. Mysteriously, it caught on fire. And I uh, got my dad and myself out of the house with no electricity. Everything was dark, one o'clock in the morning in January 2000. I think it was January 17th. And luckily there was one neighbor that was up, banged on their door and told them to call a fire department. And that was a long six minutes in my life. It took them only six minutes to get to the house. Fire chief said, because all the windows and doors were closed, obviously. He said, um, have you ever, did you ever see the movie Backdraft? And I went, no. He goes, well, you were probably a few minutes away from your house imploding, and in which case my dad and I would have totally gone. So saved again by archangels. And that led me to being homeless for six months. 
and I was suffering from PTSD that I didn't really know about until I was full in it, so I couldn't work, and I tried to uh, find a place to stay, and I couldn't, and I had very little money. And after six months of being homeless, staying here, there, and uh, eventually sleeping in my car, knowing I uh, can't do that again, I decided, well, if I'm going to die, God, I'm going to go up to Mount Shasta and die on a sacred mountain. I don't want to die in the Bay Area with all this congestion and noise and pollution and everything else. So I drove up in my little Honda hatchback to Mount Shasta and didn't know if I was going to make it or not, but I guess I was, well, I was either going to make it or I was going to put myself on the side of a mountain in a sleeping bag and just pass away that way. So that was the plan. And at the last moment, at the end of uh, August, when no rentals are available in Mount Shasta, um, I found a, a room to rent with someone that I just met there that ended up staying there for a bit in, in Mount Shasta. And uh, so I survived that, although I went into massive credit card debt. So here's another miracle. So I have excellent credit rating and all these credit cards with like 5.9% interest rate. And I had to live off my credit cards. I maxed it out. I went in a debt uh, reconsolidation, but still had to pay off probably 40, 50% of the credit card debt in total. Now at that time, uh, my dad passed and um, he had one oil stock obscure oil stock in Idaho or Montana or someplace. So I would get his statements because I took care of the trust and uh, took care of all, all of his uh, uh, administrative stuff and uh, found out that he had invested something like 10,000 shares at like 10 cents a share or something. So the total value of that portfolio was 500 bucks. And then I would get monthly statements in the mail and it would go up. It would go like to 700 and 900 and 1100. And I go, this is strange. It just keeps going up. And it went up to, believe it or not, from 500 to like $3,000. And I heard this voice saying cash out because it's not going to go any higher. So the next day I cashed out and from that day forward, it started to go back downhill. So again, I was saved. I was saved by literally $3,000 that I got to live off of for about two years, but still in credit card debt. So how can a stock do that? Some obscure stock. And then I'm, I'm sure they went bankrupt. They went out of business at that point when their stock value was basically at zero. So another miracle again. Of course, I prayed every day, you know, help, God help. Uh, I'm in daily stress of thinking about my debt. So eventually, hmm, what was it, uh, six years later, I declared bankruptcy because I was still in credit card debt a little bit. And uh, I had a hard time, um, although I started to make money with my business, uh, declared bankruptcy, didn't have to go through a lawyer, went through a um, legal aid company. So I saved money there, a little bit of a miracle there. But guess what? I, I'm without a car for a year, and my good friend who was a massage therapist who paid me $100 to give me uh, like a two-hour massage, like once every two weeks. I mean, that was a miracle in itself, right? Getting paid to get a massage. And she did that for about nine months. But anyway, she volunteered to take me shopping and to do errands. So another miracle. The only one of everybody I knew offered to be my chauffeur. Next miracle, 2007, I get a call from this stranger from Taos, New Mexico, wanting to know if I could come there and teach healing work. And I said, yes. Now, I haven't really taught on that level before, but I knew that I could do it. So, and that was a point where I had decided beforehand that I was going to do my work and not copy anybody else's work. So went there and that started a whole chain of being sponsored in many, many states, including Canada. 
to where I was able to eventually, you know, create steady income. But then again, a miracle, right? Stranger calls out of blue, didn't know me, found me somehow through a newsletter that a friend had sent him. And uh, so that started my teaching tour. So how all this came about? Well, you know, I didn't visualize it or create conscious intentions, but throughout my life, I've had miracles that have saved me. And I attribute that to the angelics, basically. And of course, certain ascended masters like uh, Mother Mary and Yeshua. How I found this place, this rental here in Asheville was a little bit of a miracle. I didn't really know anybody except one person and came here, literally cold turkey from Sedona. And uh, been here ever since, so it, it's been a home for me. So that was another miracle, although I had to wait four months, being very patient, living in a motel room for literally four months. And I was getting to the point of go, well, this is almost October now. God, you got to get me a place because winter's coming really quickly. And it showed up. Interesting enough, when I interviewed for this place, I turned it down initially. And I said to the landlady, um, if you don't find your ideal renter, uh, you can give me a call back, but I'll say no to your offer on this rental. And um, she called me back and offered it to me. Uh, this time I took it. And the people that were moving out, I didn't have any furniture. They said they would sell pretty much everything uh, in this place for $1,500. And I went, wow, geez. I could only buy a bed for that price. And here it comes with two beds and furniture, a couch and uh, tables and chairs and dining room set, all this stuff. So looked out there again. So miracles are there. Uh, I guess the thing that has got me to this place is faith that I wasn't going to be left behind, that God wasn't going to abandon me. I did not know my next step. I didn't know about the unknown. I didn't know at that time about conscious intentions or any of this stuff or quantum theory. But I had dedication. You know, I have work to do here. So that's another thing that has kept me here. But I guess what I want to share is that um, miracles can come in any form. Just be open and yes, pray and do your due diligence. Keep the faith, keep your heart open, and um, don't get discouraged if you don't know how you're gonna take your next step or how you're gonna get from here to there. So we wish you many, many miracles for this beautiful new year that we are now in. Many miracles your way. So thank you for your time and uh, listening to Whispers from the Quantum. So until next time, many blessings and take beautiful care of yourself. Namaste.